Hello everyone, this is Raymond. So, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the theoretical concepts of different setups that I've played in the past. And then, specifically, in this video today, I'm going to be covering the code setups. Um, for code setups, well, you can obviously tell that um, we call them code setups because the code and cannons are our main weapons in these types of setups. Alright, so uh, enough with the introduction about code setups, so let's just get started with the very basic traditional 8 code setup. Okay, so obviously it's called traditional 8 code setup. So we have 8 code cannons, right? And then let's talk about the way that the other plants are set up. So the 8 code cannons as our main weapons, the setup, they can deal damage to almost all of the zombies that could possibly show up in survival numbers. So, yeah, this is an important, an important part about survival animals, actually. Which is that, um, for a survival endless setup, uh, you want to make sure that it's complete. Okay, so let me explain what I mean by complete here. What I mean is, you gotta be able to make sure that the setup has, like, plants that can deal with every single type of zombies that could possibly show up. And then, you got you also gotta make sure that you protect the, the crucial plants. And, you gotta make sure that you have abundant sun income to keep the setup running through, say, hundreds of thousands of levels. Yeah, and after it lasts for more than um, two, let's say, two hundred levels without collapsing, you could technically say that you are set up. You can survive endlessly with your setup, and that's just that. I just needed to get that out of the way. It's just a basic concept. And then. Okay, so just now we said that we have the eight codes that will deal damage to most of the zombies, right? And then let's look at our, look at the other plants. So I mentioned sun income. And then we have four twin sunflowers here, which provides more than abundant sun. It's actually way more than you, how much you need in a code setup, especially in an eight code setup. So, we have four twin sunflowers, that's definitely more than enough. Then you have winter melons to slow down the zombies here as well. And then our umbrella leaves are here to protect us against bungee zombies and catapults. And then, um, as you can see here, these six gloom shrooms in the pool will deal a lot of damage to the lanes next to the pool. Then that's why we only got one winter melon. These three winter melons here and here on the side lanes, well six actually, their purpose is to make sure that uh, the zombies can be decelerated even more. Okay, what I mean by that is, if you only have one winter melon, uh, it probably throws a melon at about, uh, I don't know, like, three seconds per melon throw, I think. Yeah, so, if, let's say you have a lot of lasting Giga Gargantors from the last wave that's, like, here, it's gonna block the winter melons, and if some Giga Gargantor just spawned from here, and it just wouldn't be able to decelerate it. But with the splash damage and um, three melons working together, 
you're actually lowering the chance of some zombies walking super fast and towards the left side and then the others decelerated. Yeah, so that's the purpose of that. Okay, uh, for a lot of beginners, they may ask why I would set up bloom shrooms here. Um, in the second column, essentially. Okay, so these four loam shrooms serve two purposes, actually. So, one, they deal damage to the digger zombies that will come all the way to the left and then start walking towards the right. Secondly, uh, gargantors and giga gargantors will throw their IMPs. I don't know if that's how you should say it. It's just the little zombie. I will be addressing them as IMPs, so they'll be throwing IMPs to the back, or should I say to the left side of the court, battlefield, yeah. And then, these gloom shrooms will just uh, deal damage to those as well, because um, if we accumulate a bunch of uh, IMPs here, that's actually really, really bad. Yeah, it could block the winter melons, and the zombies on the right will get out of the status, the status of being decelerated, and they'll just uh, march towards the left at a fast pace, I guess. Okay, so this setup, you could say it's complete, but we could optimize it slightly. First of all, um, a lot of y'all might think that we put the spike rocks here to damage the backup dancers, and they can also stall the Giga Gigantors for a little, and then, as well as Zombies, right? But in reality, uh, the spike rocks can only stop 9 Zombies or 9 uh, Gargantor strikes, no matter if it's Giga or regular Gargantors. So, and then, uh, the other thing is about backup dancers. If, so, you probably want them to damage the, gar the backup dancers because they spawn, like, right here, right? Because they're, like, being summoned by the dancer zombies. But, in reality, if they're able to damage the coves, that means they're probably like right here. They probably get out of get out from the ground at like this position, sort of, which is out of the range of spike rocks. So essentially, these spike rocks have no use. So we could pretty much just get rid of them. The second thing is. The fifth plane of the pool, um, you actually do not need to put pumpkins there. If you don't put pumpkins, they will not be damaged, but if you do, pumpkin has a wider hitbox than the other plants, so now there is a chance for the pool and the zombies to damage them. But we could also dig them up. Okay, next thing. These four bloom shrooms here will make zombies spawn super fast on fast tempo levels, and we actually don't want that because the jack in the box zombies can take them out if they explode early. So we get rid of these as well. So, now we only have two bloom shrooms. We need to change this one to Umbrella Leaf. Yeah, so this is probably the best for beginners. And then, um, as for Giga Gargantors, a lot of y'all may be worried that they might damage the coves, but in reality they won't if you manipulate the setup correctly. So, three seconds after zombies spawn, you shoot, you launch the cobes to the 8th column of the 2nd and 5th lane. And if there are dancing zombies, you launch them slightly to the left of the 8th column. Yeah, and 
that's about it for manipulation. And then I've also talked about the purpose of each plan. Right? So now let's look at this uh, if you want. Okay, if you know more techniques um, about the setup, you can actually make some other changes. So, uh, I've talked about freezing and killing the bunny zombies. Uh, rest. It's a technique used in a lot of setups. If you know how to use that technique, you could actually, instead of putting umbrella leaves here, here, and here, you could actually change them to more useful plants. For example, um, okay, so the timing, let me talk about that briefly. So it's when you see the, the target that got thrown down by the on these, when they land completely, you put the coffee bean on the ice room. And then when, when they come down, they're gonna get frozen. And then, at that point, two looms is enough to kill it. So, if we were to use that technique, we could actually change the setup into this. Changing it, changing it into this is that now you have uh, now you can do more damage to most of the IMT zombies. And then that basically means that your pumpkins will be damaged less. In the pool, it's the same idea. Now you have winter melons to slow them down. The pumpkins will be damaged less, and then. At that point, two twin sunflowers should be enough. So yeah, just use the freeze and kill technique for the bungee zombies. And then yeah. So without ladders, I believe this is maybe the most optimized version of the traditional eight cone uh, for pool analysts. Okay, so. Now, let's move on to its ultimate, the optimized version. Classic thing. As you can see, um, the pool is still about the same, right? Let's take these two off because we don't need them. They're just there because it looks better, I guess. Then, now we have ladders. We don't need to fix these pumpkins ever. When a digger comes here, we have like one column of space for them to walk, and the glooms could kill out all of the digger zombies within one column of space. So these pumpkins won't be touched at all. And then we have ladders for the IMP zombies to climb. That also leaves the pumpkins in these spots damage free. But the pumpkins in the pool will be damaged, and sometimes. The backup dancers that get summoned like very close to the coves will damage the coves for a little bit, so sometimes we may need to replace the coves like once in a while. It wouldn't happen that often though, so one twin sunflower is enough. Then now we've, we've uh, deleted, or should I say taken out, one column of plants. So now two umbrella leaves are able to just cover the entire left side of the battlefield. That means we still are keeping the, the same amount of winter melons. And then the manipulation is just the same. And then, yeah, so this is the ultimately optimized version, I guess. Okay. Um, I believe you guys also know why the plants are set up like this, right? So this would deal damage to the diggers and INPs. These two will like help the side lanes and deal damage to leftovers in the pool. Then yeah you just use the coves as your main weapon still. Yeah. And also I forgot to mention when I had the last setup there. Um, 
if you see a deer or antelope that's really close to your coast, just put some can folder, like, what I mean by can folder is like really cheap plants that recharge fast, like, uh, puff shrooms, sun shrooms, scaredy shrooms, etc. Yeah, you can just put those, like, to the left side of the giga, and then it's gonna keep smashing. Yeah, and you can stop the entire land of Gigas by using that technique. That technique actually gets used in, I would say, 99% of the setups currently designed by all the PvZ players around the world, especially in China. Yeah. And then, let's move on to Classic Tenko. Okay, so now we have two coves that filled up the spots like this. We uh, don't have spots for mushrooms, abilities, abilities, or sunflowers. But that is okay. You can just put two tunnels here, and then the dolphin riders will not be able to jump over. And then, since we don't have blooms in the pool, we've distributed redistributed the winter melons a little bit so that each lane is like uh the natural damage from each lane is like basically evil. yeah so this this one you could also see that we've got the bones here and the leftmost column is left so in the digger's ladders so that keep the pumpkin stand free from my keys. Same idea, right? And then the coves are your main weapon. And that's pretty much it. Oh, also to note for the ten coves that have you're now actually able to kill out all of the catapults before they sh they throw their basketballs. That's it for about this setup, I guess. And uh, for ten coves, you actually launch the coves slightly to the right of the eighth column when there are no dancer zombies, and the timing is one second after each wave of zombies spawns. If the spawning delays, you just uh, shoot the coves at about seven. You just shoot a pair of coves every like seven seconds or so. Yeah. And then for eight coves, when spawning delays, shoot them every nine seconds. Yeah. Okay, so this is it about the classic tank. However, I also have an, a slightly optimized version, to me at least, slightly optimized Tenko setup that looks like this. So, yeah. Give me a second. Because when you launch them at that time and to that spot, you can actually kill out all of the dolphin zombies on their jumps. Yeah, so that actually leaves more plants like your 
pumpkins free of damage on the mongrels. These two pumpkins, at least, we leave them free of damage from dolphin zombies. Dolphin riders, yeah. And then on the levels with dancing zombies, still shoot them slightly to the left of the A pods. Yeah. And then, technically, we don't need a sunflower here. You could change to a watermelon. And you could also change it to a sword ice, I guess. But technically, usually, I like to keep it as a sunflower just in case I make a mistake. And. If I keep a sunflower, I think it's actually more friendly to those beginners. And also, it is easier to distribute the winter melons like this while laddering for beginners compared to two, 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 two. Three and one is easier because you can just lure them, lure the ladder zombies to one lane and then use garlic to get them back to the slain, and then at last, only you, like, when you dig up these two bone shrooms, you leave the ladder zombies damage free, and then you can just put on, put the winter melon on, in, should I say, at the last second. Yeah. Then, yeah, if you were to build a classic Tenko by hand, you generally need to trap some football zombies and bucket heads, and then wait for the next um, wave of zombies to come. Yeah, and that's actually pretty tough. I wouldn't go too deeply into that for now. Okay. The classic 12 cup. Okay, in this setup, the sun that falls from the sky is enough for us. Then we just launch the coast to the ninth column always. It's and the timing is slightly before each wave of zombies spawn. And when flying delays, just shoot them every six seconds. Alright. That's the manu manipulation of it. And then uh Compared to the 8 code setups and 10 code setups, the 12 code setups actually require a little bit of precision precision because um, you want to kill out all of the dancing zombies at the ninth column. That's why we need to launch them slightly before zombies spawn. Yeah, you just do that and then... Yeah. So they don't summon backup dancers and then when they get to about here, they turn into ash. And that's pretty much it. So... Uh, yeah, right? Um, what was I gonna say? Let's yeah, the, the, the winter melons are distributed in the way that the classic tempo was. This is the most optimized version, in theory. Yeah, and I talked about the manipulation, and yeah, so just gotta be a little more precise, I guess. Okay, the last setup I'm gonna talk about today, since I'm only talking about the code setups today, is gonna be our Unlike the 8 cope, 10 cope, and 12 cope setups, uh, you actually cannot, you're not able to just survive without the cope, with the copes. You need to use ice rooms and drum rooms for help. So essentially, you just uh, shoot the cope, and then. Like, okay, yeah, let's see. So you shoot the cobes, right? And at about this moment, you use an ice room. That will freeze the next wave of zombies at like this position here. And then you just watch out for some zombies. And then 
Yeah, so if there are zombies, uh, when the front of your vehicle gets to about here, you launch the set to the eighth column. And then you use another ice room and you repeat that process. If there are no zombies, you just look for balloon zombies and football zombies, honestly. And then if they don't show up, have some experience, I guess. So for football zombies, when they get to about here, you should probably launch the boats. And for balloon zombies, same thing, about here. Launch the boats. Yeah. And that's why we have the three sword ice rooms. And then uh, we would we would use up the sword ice rooms at times, or we could have a lack of them at times, and that's when we need to use the Doom Shroom at the front. And actually, we have these four spots to use. Don't ever put them here because they could damage the ladders. And um, if any Guardian Tours throw their item keys to Fourth column on the side lanes, just temporarily, temporarily put a pump in there to protect the ice room. Yeah, and the zombie that will do most damage to, to the plants is actually dolphin riders in the setup because you're not able to get them in the pumps unless if it's in the first and the tenth waves which you launch the coves immediately after zombies spawn. Usually, uh, they will, like, be... What was I gonna say? So, they jump at a different time, I guess that's like, probably a good way to put it. Yeah, so, when your zombie gets here, right, Zombie gets to this spot. The dolphin riders have already in trouble here and they popped over. And yeah, so we know that we shoot the coves to the eighth column when Zombies get about to about here, right? But when Zombies get to about like here, the dolphin riders are already here. You can never get them, honestly, with the coves. Unless if it's the first waves of each beginning of the play. Yeah. And then, yeah, you just do that. That. Then, how many gets to about here? Shoot another pair. Do that again. Yeah, and you just repeat that process, and when you have less than, say, two ice rooms, maybe you should use a film shroom in the pool instead, and then the next wave, in the next wave, just launch goes immediately after you get them. Yeah, and the setups for the plants, I mean, the purpose for each plan, I think I've explained them. Well, actually, I want to talk about these two gloom rooms specifically. Uh, these two gloom rooms, you actually, uh, their purpose is to help the two gloom rooms in the pool damage the dolphin riders, and they also deal damage to the lasting new gargantuans. Yeah, so uh, we need these two. Especially for helping the pool. Because two gloom shrooms without deceleration, that is like a lot of pressure on these two pumpkins. And three sunflowers is enough for like in terms of sun abundance. Yeah, and for these plants, obviously we need to use the freeze and kill technique. Right. Yeah, and that's okay. One more thing to be said. Uh, you can actually, if if you have 
extra ice shrooms available, you can actually temporarily store them over here. Because uh, the ice shrooms have a same hitbox width compared to the bloom shrooms, and since the zombies will not crush the bloom shrooms, they will not crush these two ice shrooms either. But you gotta make sure if there are bungee zombies, you gotta use these two first. Because there's only one gloom from that protects them, and they will almost be stolen. Always. Uh, well, yeah, I think so. Um, okay, so that's pretty much about it for today's video. And for my next video, I'm gonna be talking about the theoretical concepts of Codeless and non code setups, and I think there will be a lot for me to talk about by then. So, cool. Please like, subscribe, and comment below if you have any questions. See you guys next time. Bye.